Now, sometimes when those places are later sold, they can be sold as a tourist attraction. Could this sometimes pose a problem? If you know you've got ghosts and your house has got a reputation for ghosts, how far do you have to go to make sure those ghosts stay? And if they do, how do you show them to the public? It's an interesting thought, isn't it? Behind me, Chingle Hall, originally built back in 1260, although from the exterior, most of the house has now been renovated and changed, although inside, some of the rooms are still very much as they were all those hundreds of years ago. Oh, to be a fly on the wall all those hundreds of years ago, when dark deeds happened in this place, where priests hid in small holes for fear of their lives. It was illegal to worship in those days. Many people were murdered here. There are all sorts of dark deeds and dastardly goings on. And even now, people are still experiencing the repercussions of some of those events. There are hauntings galore in this place. People see, hear, feel, and smell all sorts of strange things. It's claimed that this is the most haunted house in Britain. So, let's go inside and find out whether the claim is true. I think it's the, the most haunted house I've ever been in. I've been in quite a few and this is phenomenal. Really is incredible. The amount of phenomena that, that occurs here is just unbelievable. Every cliched um, phenomena is, is here. Everything. I mean, the very first moment I set foot in this place I had my hair pulled. So that was immediate and it's just one thing after another. But uh, other times you can wait for hours and hours and nothing will happen whatsoever. Well, Chingle Hall was a secret mass centre in the late 15th and early 1600s during the times of the Reformation when it was legal to practice the Catholic faith in England. This was a place where Catholics would go in secret and hold masses against the laws of the time. There were quite a few different secret mass centres across the north of England um, and this one was the main one, if you like. Um, many people came here and they risked their lives coming here if they were caught. It was considered treason against the laws of the time and they could actually be killed for it, so it was quite important in that respect. I've heard footsteps, uh, bells ringing, doors slamming, um, been touched, woken up, uh, objects moving, you name it, everything happens. The house is also full of secret hiding places used by persecuted Catholic priests. Some of them would be forced to hide there for days if soldiers were in the area. Inevitably, some of them met with tragic ends. There seems to be a lot of um, ghosts from the Reformation period where people have been tortured and killed and been a lot of suffering within these walls. And it seems from that period particularly, um, the spirits remain here. Well, we've heard something about the history of Chingle Hall. Right now we're going to take a guided tour around it and talk to some people who've had some very real experiences inside this house. Well, this is the great hall that I'm coming into now. It would have been used as the main room in the house in Tudor times. And Jason is waiting here. Jason's had a number of experiences, both here and indeed over there. What, what have you actually seen here? Well, that's right. Um, in January 1996, I was sat down here in the great hall at the table. Um, and a friend of mine was in the kitchen. And I was writing some notes down. And I heard a noise and I looked up towards the chapel door. And I saw a figure step in, actually step into the room. And I thought it was my friend. It disappeared. And a few days later, I came into the hall, there was nobody here, turned the light switch on in this room, and the same figure was stood here. But it was very large, it was about this tall, it was very big, with big shoulders, very angled shoulders, and I didn't understand what this ghost was. As far as I knew, it had never been seen him before, but a few weeks later, a very famous Dutch psychic came here, and he stepped into this room for the first time, and explained that there was a military colonel in here. A lot of people would say it's uh, a pretty brave man who would live in a haunted house like this. Do you ever feel frightened here? I've never really felt frightened. I've had times when I've been alone here that I felt apprehensive, especially when I've had to sleep in the hall all by myself. And mm. I have had some things happen to me. Um, but I've never had anything that's really scared me. Nothing I feel evil is here. The house was exercised 15 years ago for anything nasty to leave. And I strongly believe that all the ghosts or presences here are friendly. Mm. 